Hi, it's Dr. Jason Musman, Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today we are performing a second stage reconstruction of a full thickness uh, nose defect after a squamous cell cancer. Involve this patient's uh, left side of the nose. The ala here, if you can uh, pan down here. Full thickness defect. Uh, when thinking about nose reconstruction, you want to think about lining, structure, and coverage. In this case, it was all the way through. Usually it's just the skin, so you just have to think about coverage, which is the most obvious thing here, which is from the forehead. This is a pyramidian forehead flap based off the supratrochlear artery. 1.8 centimeters from the midline is the pedicle. And it heads um, upward on the forehead in a curvilinear fashion. I try to curve the flap so that it doesn't take very many hair follicles. Provides uh, the most, the best skin match to the to the remaining nose. We're going to divide this, um, remove the uh, pedicle. The I tell most patients it's like the umbilical cord if this is the baby. This will supply the blood uh, for about three to four weeks until the nose blood vessels have time to grow into the skin here. Uh, what's not obvious is that underneath this, there's a cartilage graft. Uh, the best cartilage graft for the ala, in my experience, is the alar, is the conical cartilage from the same ear. You can see this side, incisions on the back of the ear, and there's absolutely no deformity to the ear. Uh, you can take a really long piece of cartilage, has a beautiful curvature, almost uh, perfectly matches the nose ala curvature, and inset it. It's very, very important if you're a you know a plastic surgeon just out of training. Uh, to make sure the cartilage graft is very large, much larger than you would think. It has to touch the remaining lobule of the nose, which is this part of the nose, and act as a strut that bridges all the way down and has some purchase down here at the alar base. If it's just sort of floating in the middle, the whole thing will collapse. And then there's the lining of the nose. Uh, there's different uh, flaps uh, described in the literature and uh, my preferred flap, because it's the most mobile and very robust, is the septal flap. It's very hard to see, so I'll just explain it. It's the mucoperichondrial lining of the septum. It sort of curves down and around, creates like a little cul-de-sac. Uh, again, if you're a new plastic surgeon that uh, is trying to figure out how to do this flap, creates a little cul-de-sac, airtight, but by the time you go to divide it, the body has made an air passage above and below it almost 100% of the time and a simple snip will help divide and inset that flap. It's not very difficult um, to divide and inset, difficult to perform um, some pro tips. Try to take as much of the septal flap as you could possibly reach. You'll need every millimeter. Uh, when harvesting the forehead flap, just commit to elevating the forehead from temporalis to temporalis uh, to close. 95% uh, of them should close without a skin graft or without uh, any defect for secondary healing, whatever you prefer. Uh, the other tip is that when performing the forehead flap, it's classically described to thin uh, the first third down to the skin, the second third down to the muscle, and then leave the uh, proximal third full thickness. Uh, really, the, only the last few millimeters should be thinned at all. There's really no benefit at all to thinning anything in here. That's how forehead flaps die. This is an extremely robust flap. I think a lot of people get intimidated because they see these flaps die in training. I can't remember the last one that has died, uh, but I don't thin it as it's described in the literature. I think that would be an important tip uh, if you are um, performing this for the first time. It's easily thinned on the second stage. We're going to lift it up. We're going to cut it here, lift it up, thin it from underneath very, very carefully, inset it. This will be inset right here with a uh, either a VY or a linear uh, laceration uh, continuing at the forehead. Last um, uh, suture line uh, heals very, very well. Uh, please join us for video two where I show uh, the inside of the flap, um, which will be done in about uh, 20 or 30 minutes. Thank you.